How did the Enigma machine work? How did Alan Turing break the Enigma using the Bombay machine? In this series of videos, we explore the Enigma machine and the Bombay machine, which we have built from scratch in a virtual environment so that we can actually see them working inside out and understand every aspect of these incredible machines. Welcome to Ingenious! In the last episode, we saw how Enigma machine was used for encrypted communications. In this video, we are going to dive into the details of how the Enigma machine works. Let us start with some basics. How do we use an electrical circuit for encryption? Here is a very simple electrical circuit. It has three switches named as A, B, and C. These switches mimic a keyboard for entering a message. We also have three light bulbs named as A, B, and C. There is a mysterious black box wiring between the switches and the bulbs that I've hidden for now. Okay. Let us see what happens when I press the switch A. The bulb B is glowing. So, A is converted to B. Let's try pressing the other switches. B is converted to C. C is converted to A. By looking at this constant pattern and relation between the glowing bulb and the press switch, it is very easy to guess the black box wiring. Revealing the black box wiring here. This is the most simplest encryption circuit that one can make. If you know the wiring, you can easily decrypt any encrypted message generated from this circuit. Let us call it Type 1 Encryption Circuit. Here is another electrical circuit. Let us try this one. I'm going to press A. OK. Two things happened when I pressed A. 1. The number on the black box changed from 1 to 2. And, after that, bulb named as B started glowing. Let's try one more time. OK. 2, change to 3, and, I got C, which is glowing. This is interesting. So, A is converted to B, when the number reads 1, and, A is converted to C, when the number reads 2. As you can tell, when I press switch A, the output I will get depends on that number. The number is a setting. Only if you know the setting, you can tell the output. Without knowing that number, you cannot know the output. This is type 2 encryption circuit. How does this circuit look like inside the black box? Let's take a look. This may look intimidating. But it's really simple and beautiful. There are three rings, red, yellow and blue. Each of them connect to the inputs which is A, B and C, respectively. These rings rotate and their position depends on the number shown in the center. Each of these rings have a pointer, an arrow, if you will, that connects to the output fixed contacts of A, B and C light bulbs. So, let us see it in action. Right now, the pointer on the red ring is connected to the bulb A. Now, I'm going to press A. As you can see, all the rings rotated and now, the pointer for the red ring connects to bulb B, which is glowing. If I press again, it rotates further to connect to C. It is really intriguing to watch this circuit in operation. This Type 2 encryption circuit was an important part of Enigma, which will become evident in the later part of this video. Now then, we are finally going to unveil the entire electrical circuit wiring inside the Enigma. Here it is. When we set out to build this virtual environment, our goal was to make everyone visualize every single aspect of the Enigma machine, so that you can see it working right down to every single wire, switch, and light bulb. On the left of your screen is the Enigma, and, on the right, you have the circuit that goes behind it. Let us go through it component by component first. As you can probably tell by just observation, there are 26 light bulbs for each of the alphabet. One terminal of this light bulb is connected to a battery. The other end goes towards the keyboard. 
The keyboard has 26 switches for each of the alphabet key on the keyboard. Notice that these are two contact switches. These are not on-off switches which we encounter in daily life. When the key is pressed, the switch output wire connects to the battery's terminal. When the key is not pressed, the switch output wire connects to the light bulb. Moving on, the output wire from the switch then travels through the encryption circuit of Enigma. First part of that circuit is the plugboard. Plugboard is similar to type 1 encryption we saw earlier in this video. Let me show you how it exchanges letters. I'm going to connect A with E on the plugboard. As you can see, the plugboard forms a connection between the letter A and the letter E. The wires coming from switch A and switch E are exchanged. This is similar to the type 1 encryption that we saw earlier. Similarly, O and I are exchanged by the plugboard link that I just created. Onwards from the plugboard, the output wires then go upwards towards the rotors. The rotors are similar to type 2 encryption circuit that we discussed earlier. There are 26 input wires and there are 26 output wires. They interconnect with each other depending on the angular position of the rotor. Let us rotate these rotors. It's really amazing to visualize how the output wires keep tapping to different input wires based on the position of the rotor. There are three of these rotors at a time in Enigma. Output of first rotor feeds as an input to the second and so on. Notice that the second rotor rotates by one step when first rotor completes one complete circle. Similarly, the third rotor rotates by one step when second rotor completes one circle. Output of the third rotor, that is, the leftmost rotor is fed back into itself, which is called as the reflector wiring. It is worth noticing that the rotors use the same 26 wires for inputs as well as outputs. In this example, I'm giving input voltage to the first wire, that is, to the letter A. The voltage travels through all the rotors and back to generate the output. As you can observe, the output letter keeps changing as the rotors rotate. Now, let us see the entire Enigma circuit in operation. Let's get to it then. I've already made the settings. Now let's hit W. I got O as output. You can see the corresponding light bulb glowing. I'm going to keep the W key pressed so that we can trace the complete circuit. We start from the battery positive terminal connected to the switch of the keyboard. It goes to the plug board. Then through the plug board, heading upwards towards the rotors. Through rotor 1, rotor 2, rotor 3, and back, 3, 2, 1. Heading back to the plug board. Through the open switch of letter O. And to the light bulb representing O, completing the circuit to the negative terminal of the battery. Let's press the next letter of the input message. Pressing E. Notice that the rotor moves by one step every time we press the key. We got T. Let's trace how the letters travel through this circuit. We start from the letter E. Plugboard converts E to A because of our plugboard setting. The A travels upwards towards the rotors. Converts to S via rotor 1. Then to R via rotor 2. To N via rotor 3. Gets reflected as J back into rotor 3. Travels back through all the rotors eventually comes out as T. Then it travels downwards towards the plugboard again. Remains T through the plugboard. And up it goes from there to light the bulb for the letter T. 
It is astounding to visualize that every letter you enter into the Enigma machine has the potential to undergo so many transformations before the machine finally generates the encrypted letter. Let us type in the rest of the message. This was the promise, wasn't it? To see the Enigma working down to every single component in one single picture. Promise delivered. If you think you have got some value from this video, do hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss brand new content from Ingenious. See you in the next video.